the only problem with that is that they, uh, why didn't you explain to them that their uh, authority ended at the, at the threshold? I wasn't there. My wife oh, no, 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 that's fine that you, that's fine that your wife was there, okay? Let me put it this way. Not just their authority to be in your house and they were, you, they were invited in. What makes them think, what I'm trying to say to you folks, what makes you think that their code applies within somebody else's domestic authority? Okay, let me put it this way. When, when Hillary Clinton said we can't go into Syria because we can't interfere with their domestic authority or their domestic policy, it doesn't just pertain to a country. A domestic can be a country, like right out of this dictionary flat out says, <clears throat> domestic pertaining to a nation considered as a family or to one's own country, not foreign, as domestic troubles or domestic dissensions. See, a domestic can be made in one's own house, nation, or country, okay? So domestic doesn't just mean your house. Domestic means country or nation. Now they have, that's what I try to explain to people. That's why the cops have the ability to touch you and drag you down to the ground, because they have domestic authority over you. So, uh, like I said, when I explain to people domestic authority, <clears throat> I'll just cut copy and paste this and put it on the website, uh, on this chat for a few folks. But you go to Lord, Black's Law Dictionary back in 2004, about 1884, not before slavery, not before women's rights, 2004. Domestic authority, this is why the cops can touch you, this is why you can touch anybody in your house, this is why you can do whatever you want in your house. With that, and nobody can interfere with your domestic authority, just like we can't interfere with Syria's, even if they're nerve gassing their people, we don't have the capacity to generate policy for uh, under somebody else's uh, domestic affairs. That's what she said. Believe me, it's true. Domestic authority is the legal power to use non-deadly force when reasonable necessary to protect a person from whom one is responsible. Two, the defense that allows you to stay in court that a person reasonable, responsible for another, such as a parent responsible for a child, can use non-deadly force when reasonably necessary to protect that person being cared for. And then, like I said, I'm just going to put it in there, what page you find it on, and you can go to court jurisdiction under an assault and battery. And uh, I'll actually put a case up in there for you, if you really, folks really care. But uh, domestic, uh, domestic affairs, they don't have the right to go into your home. They have no right to do any of this stuff that you think they do. Even if you invite them in. Say you invited Hillary Clinton into uh, Syria. Does that mean now she could uh, tell Syria what to do just because she went there? And she said, well, I got the power of the United States behind me. Yeah, well, well, that's just lovely. So what? You know, what does that have to do with your ability to tell us what we can and cannot do? We're not under our domestic control, under our domestic authority. What makes you think? that your domestic, pol your domestic policies have anything to do with my domestic policies. Just because that's your code, that you people run on that in your, in your, in your, in your nation or your country, in your house, what makes you think that your rules and your codes pertain to me in my house? See, so this is what I try to say to you folks, man, to try to uh, get away from uh, them saying, well, you know, they say they can go in your house, and when they go in your house, well, you know, you open the door, and uh, what are you talking about? You're saying just because Hillary Clinton can sneak a whole bunch of Marines into Syria, that that gives her the right to uh, do whatever she wants? No, that's ridiculous. You know, when they cross that threshold, they're outside of their authority. Now, the only way I explain to people sometimes is <clears throat> if you're a U.S. citizen, for a lot of people, it's good to be a U.S. citizen at times, and sometimes it's not. I explain it on the video, like you watch it on these all these movies with Vietnam when they're flying the guys out of Saigon. You see somebody knocking on that U.S. embassy gate, and he says he's Canadian. They'll say, oh, the Canadian embassy? Well, that's about 50 miles that way. And they'll say, what? 50 miles? Yeah, wait a second, they've been overtaken an hour ago. Well, it's not what we can do for you, Mr. Canadian. It's not what we can do for you, Mr. Australian. Uh, all we do is we take in U.S. citizens and save their lives. I guess you're going to have to die. Goodbye. So sometimes it's good to have a U.S. citizen passport, a U.S. citizen on ship ID, because sometimes the Marines can come in and save you. So that's what I say to folks. So say uh, a man or a woman's screaming from inside their house, and they're saying, hey, Mr. Policeman, come in here and save me. It's basically calling in the Marines. 
and the Marines are going to come in, they're going to grab you, they're going to drag you out of Syria, and they're going to say, okay, fine. Now, can they press charges on somebody in Syria? No. All they're going to do is advise you not to go back into Syria and say, you know what, uh, the Marines don't want to have to come in and rescue all your time. So, if you want to, if you want to be in Syria, that's totally up to you, but, you know, will you please stop calling the U.S. Marines in to save you every time you get in trouble? So the same thing like with a woman or a man going back home. I like, could you please stop calling the cops to come and rescue you? You know, you got it out of the house safely. Now, you know what? There's really nothing we could do to the people inside of that house because they're not under our domestic authority. We saved you because you're a U.S. citizen or you're a state citizen or you're a citizen of our town or whatever. We came and saved you. But honestly, we don't want to be bothered with this nonsense. So can you please just stop doing what you're doing? And that's the way it always used to roll. And they'd, they'd say, well, back there in the 60s and 70s and 80s, that the husband and wives would be screaming up and down, oh, don't be kids, you know, we're getting our asses kicked in our homes, blah, 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 we got to pass laws to protect us. The police back in the 70s, they'd say, hey, you know what, we can't tell that man what to do in his house. We have no authority. If you want to go back home to him, that's your problem. He does, you know, if, if, if you want to go back to him, what do you want us to do? And see, somehow, see, something happened in the 80s or 90s or the 2000s, where all of a sudden, somebody thought they were going to say, whether, you know, create some sort of a code and say, well, now we have domestic authority over people's domestic affairs within their, within their homes, within their domiciles, within their domestic authority. And somehow, none of you people ever just said, hey, wait, since, since who? Since what? <laughs> just because you guys write a code? That doesn't have anything to do just because Hillary Clinton writes a code and says we have the domestic, we have the right to go into Syria and do whatever we want. And the Syrians are still going to say you're crazy. We don't care what code you write. You're on the side of your domestic authority. Go back to wherever you came from, but you have no rights and no controls over anything that's going on. Or in my affairs that are going on in my domicile of my nation, in my country, in my domestic, under my domestic authority. Have a nice day. So that's why I say that's why the police have power over you. And because domestic doesn't just mean a house, it can mean a nation or a country. And these folks have been assigned to do the the public the public venue. You know, once you step outside of your threshold at your home, you're in public venue. You're one of the public at large. And at large it just means like being in a jungle. You're just running around doing whatever you want to do. You're the public at large. It's like the, the, the bank robber is still at large. That means the bank robber's not been captured. The bank robber's still running around doing whatever the hell he pleases, that he still might pose a danger. So the bank robber's still at large. So you're just one of the public at large. So that's why the police look at you no different than they look at a bank robber who is at large, the public at large. And they have to basically control them to maintain a certain domestic tranquility. So that's all Dad is doing when he's in his house. He's trying to communicate contain a certain domestic tranquility. So uh, he has the right to basically do whatever he wants as long as it's not, it's not deadly. But other than that, he's good to go. And I just gave you guys where you could find that I encouraged her some kind of amount of assault and battery and domestic stuff. And I pulled it right out of the, the dictionary from 2004. So even in 2004, they still believe there's something called domestic authority. But just because they started writing new laws, what you guys call laws, in 1980, 1990, thinking that, oh, well, now they can come in our house, and oh, when we open a door, now what, you, you tell me Syria has to have a wall 10 feet high in the door around the whole entire country? Well, oh, they, said, they said, well, the Marines said, well, gee, didn't have a fence. Gee, didn't have a door. Gee, you know, we were just hanging out in Jordan. Next thing we knew, we were in Syria. We saw you guys doing something wrong. So, gee, we just took all your guns and weapons. Gee, I guess you should have put up a door or no trespassing sign. That's ridiculous. They know they have no authority. They, have, they know they have no right to do what they're doing by crossing into somebody else's uh, domestic affairs. So, like I said, people say, oh, domestic world. I just explained you. Domestic means nation, country, or a house. So, uh, that helps a little bit. I hope to see what I'm going with this uh, gun thing. When they're saying that you challenge the right to enter into your domestic affairs, and that you could interpret the laws under your domestic authority and what's under your control at all times. <laughs> that they were guests. 
You know, they were guests at the home and guests if you then was on the phone. He thought they were guest means in Latin. It means hostile. Like a host brings you in. Right. Oh, yeah, it is, Dan. Dan's on the floor, huh? Yeah, I'm on, man. Are you talking to my partner? Yep, so you just explain how a guest yeah. is actually a hostile entity inside your domestic, inside your domicile. And he's supposed to be feared, and honestly, you do whatever's necessary and probably get that guest the hell out. Right. So, when he's a guest in your home, he has to act accordingly. Well, you have the right to do whatever you want to vanquish your guest. Because he's perceived to be an enemy, because he does not know the code flows in your house. He does not know the law of your home. And if he trespasses and you give a fair warning to stop the trespass, you have every right to do whatever you think is necessary and proper to maintain tranquility in your home. Anything up until leading to non deadly force. As long as you don't kill a guy, you do whatever you want. And that pretty well is established as rule of law all over the world. You know, like what he's doing, basically throw him over the castle wall and say, get out of here. Don't come back. You're not welcome. But you don't kill him. I'm not saying go in there and shoot him with a bazooka, man. I'm just saying, hey, get him out. Come stay out. Because like I said to people, if you let them listen to the show and not, I should have told you. And I certainly know Dan knows. Because they come into your home, they better have a warrant. It was a warrant with a bond attached to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or at mm-hmm. least they, they better have a bond. Because mm-hmm. they come into your home and, they, and, they, and, they, and when they're in your home and they knock over your million dollar chandelier, or, or, or shot at your priceless Ming vase from the 8th century that uh, somebody's going to pay for that damage. So when they come in with a warrant, it better, it better, that warrant better be back with a bond because you're going to claim the bond. If any wrong, they do. So just because they have a warrant, like I used to say, oh, warrants. Oh, I, they're not going to do it. I say, oh, warrants. Oh, yeah, I love warrants. You got a warrant for me? No, I got one. He says, oh, great. Where's the bond? <laughs> And they go with a bond. So the bond. The bond is supposed to be attached to a warrant. Where's the bond? So that we don't have one. Well, we'll back to go get one. Then bring back the warrant and give it to me. I'll be glad to accept the, the warrant and the bond. Then execute whatever the hell you want to execute. I don't care. But come back with that bond. They're like, well, I, you know, I guess we, we'll go get it. I guess if you want it. I said, of course I do. And then I said, I pulled out a box of matches from my pocket. And I said to the, the sheriff, the deputy guy here. Yeah. And when you come back with the bond, burn that house down to the ground. Because you come back with a million dollar bond, I'm claiming the whole one million dollars. Whether or not you break anything in the house or not, I'm claiming that you did do some damage. <laughs> so you might as well have some fun and burn it down to the ground because I'm claiming every damn whole equity in that bond that you represent me. You ain't leaving the bond. I'm going to cash that bond in. So come back with a million dollar bond. You'll mow up and come on in. It's like renting out a dance hall for reception for a wedding. You gotta put up a bond just in case you guys do some crazy damage to the to the dance hall. You gotta put up a bond. We're not just gonna let you crazy bastards come here and burn the place down to the ground. You wanna burn it down to the ground? Give us a bond and burn it down to the ground. Then do your pyrotechnics, whatever you want during this wedding reception. I don't care. Burn it down to the ground. I got a bond. Whatever you want. 